Hey everybody, this is Spasmodic, and welcome to the 13th and final episode of Doom 2016 Without Jumping. Today, we're wrapping this project up with the well. First off, I just want to say, I'm not calling this level Argent Denier. I'm confident in the first part, the word Argent is used at least 8,000 times during this game, but this Denier business? What is that? I read somewhere that it's apparently where the Doom Slayer was conceived, but the person who wrote that doesn't know that. It's like when people say they know how to spell the word vacuum. You don't know. Stop it. I also keep wanting to call it Urgent Dinner, so I'm just calling it the well to avoid problems. Now, several levels in this project hold special places in my heart. Finishing the UAC with nothing was, I think, on par with the greatest gaming achievements of all time. It was amazing to interact with members of the Doom speedrunning community to tackle the Argent Energy Tower, those guys are the best. Struggling my way through the Cadinger Sanctum and then the Argent Facility destroyed was very rewarding. Those two impossible obstacles on Titan's Realm and the Necropolis that nearly broke my spirit. The Well also holds a special place in my heart because I remember nothing about it. Am I alone in this or does every other gamer on the planet struggle with remembering anything about the final mission in a game? I've played the UAC so much, I named every zombie on the level, but the well is so alien to me, I think it built the pyramids. Top marks for that joke. I remember no sensation of any kind when I played through this level for the first time. This realization came into focus after finishing Vega Central Processing the other day. After I finished editing and uploading the video, I was watching a movie with my wife later that night and randomly thought, is that how I was supposed to do it? It's the same sort of suspicion you carry with you always as an adult. Like, I helped drywall a ceiling once and every time I look at it, I just feel like it's up to something. The well is essentially that feeling for the entire duration of the mission, and it hasn't gone away despite the fact that I've played through it several times just to make sure. All of this is to say, I go to great lengths to hide my discomfort in commentary tracks. So this first obstacle, you definitely want a gauss boost over this gap, otherwise there's no way you can possibly clear it. And after some fighting, you'll be greeted with a series of boosts and wall climbs more befitting of a level so deep into this project. Thankfully, they aren't the worst either. They can be unforgiving at times, but they're possible. For the first gap, you gauss jump over it, then you can just walk up this wall. Now this next gap is a bit suspect, but you can walk over it. Then it's a horizontal gauss boost over this next gap, followed by another horizontal boost over here, where you can walk up and climb the next wall. Then you're free to walk off this platform and land on the section below. From here, you climb up this short wall, then you can simply walk over to the equivalent of the megasphere and into the next area. Moving on, we find ourselves in this area with an obstacle that presents itself at the end. Other than that, this area is easy to run around without jumping. But once you stab the orb thing, you have a couple options. The first is pressing the skull switch, and if you follow the path it reveals, you can easily walk over to the next area. I like this option a lot as it takes advantage of the map very elegantly. You can also, if you wish, use this lift, gauss when you're in the air, and you'll land on this platform here. Then, you can do a simple gauss boost into the giant mouth thing, and proceed. The second orb guy plus giant mouth area is very simple, you can navigate it without jumping, and actually just walk straight to the next area. There's a path that takes you straight there. When you're here, the final obstacle in this game is this tiny wall here. I thought this was very poetic. I started this project on the UAC, obviously, but I wanted to do it without any assistance whatsoever, just me and a pistol. It's fitting then that the final obstacle in this game can be done with a pistol. So ladies and gents, not only is that how you finish the well without jumping, but that is how you finish Doom 2016 without jumping. And of course, after the final obstacle, you just have to fight the spider mastermind, and with the weapon wheel glitch, you don't have anything to worry about. And that's it. We're here. We made it. Not only was the idea of getting through this game without jumping daunting, but editing commentary tracks like I've been doing is new territory for me. I'm no stranger to commentary, but doing this was oddly nerve-wracking. I think the quality of my thoughts is pretty good, but sometimes it feels difficult to share them. I've always wanted to make informative videos like this, especially with my Halo tricks, but I never got around to doing it. I think I did a fairly decent job though, it gives me hope moving forward with future projects. I'm also quite terrible at following through with projects like this. There's been many many times in the past where I've been motivated at the start of a project only to never finish a third installment or something of that nature, so to see this finished, that's an achievement for me. I learned a lot about this game in the process and I'm really glad that I took the time to finish everything that I envisioned. I always wanted to learn more about Doom after watching the speedruns of it, and it feels nice to have contributed to the Doom universe in some way. I've also been playing Doom since I was four to five years old, and to have it still be a part of my life all these years later makes me really happy. It's been a pleasure, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this series. I thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you around. Spaz out.